Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Timothy here with Jank Diver Gaming. We're stepping away from Cube for a minute to do some Strixhaven draft. Um, this set is new to me. I have not done a single draft yet, so I'm going to jump into this uh, just fresh out the gates. I actually don't even know what some of the cards in this set do, but um, we're here to try it out. I figured it would be fun to just kind of record my first take of the format and maybe record like my last take of the format and kind of compare those. Uh, and just kind of see where I start the format out at and where I end the format out. Uh, I'm going to play best of one here, so up to seven wins or three losses, whichever one comes first. And we're just going to try to learn some things, right? The set is fairly new. People have different opinions, but until I try it out for myself, I won't really have my own opinion. So um, I'm excited to share this with everybody. I hope everybody has a good time. You can let me know in the comments below uh, what you would have picked, what's been working for you, things of that nature. Keep in mind, we are a cube-related community, and we've got more cube-related content on the way. You can subscribe to this channel for more content related to this sort of stuff. You can find us uh, on our, in our Discord, which is probably the best way to speak with us personally. There will be links to our Discord community below. And uh, we have a podcast now, The Deep Dive on Libsyn, jankdivergaming.libsyn.com. Uh, com is that it? Uh, whatever. We'll have links to the um, podcast where Chris and I will be talking about the historic format and cubing with the historic card pool. So, with all that being said, today's name of the game just retail limited, some Strixhaven. I'm gonna blow a bunch of coins here that I don't use for anything else, and we're gonna see what we can get into. Uh, I thought about doing best of th or I thought about doing a bot draft just so I could spend more time looking through the cards, but. I don't like bot drafting. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, so, ooh, very professional, very nice. So what do we got going on here? We have, um, I mean, Lightning Helix is great, right? So there's a Mystical Archive card in every single pack. Um, uncommon, rare, mythic. Does kind of dictate how often you see them, but doesn't really uh, necessitate the power level. Like Lightning Helix is kind of an uncommon quality card. As far as things that stick out to me right away, I think none of the commons are better than the top row of cards. This one I'm a little bit skeptical about, but Quintorius and Lightning Helix seem really good to me. Umbral Juke seems fine. Actually, probably just good, right? But it's a new format. I'm going to try out some rares. I don't know how they're going to pan out. I don't know if this format is fast or slow. So we're going to see if a middle-of-the-ground creature like Archmage Emeritus is going to pan out. Four mana, two, two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery or copy an instant or sorcery, draw a card. Let's take the rare. Let's try it out and see how it goes. You can let me know how Archmage uh, Emeritus has been for you. Following that up, um, there are two blue guilds. So there is Quandrix, the Simic guild, and then there's the Is It guild. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Prismari. And Double Major strikes me as not a very good card, but again, something I want to try out. Uh, it's actually pretty good with Archmage. Archmage, Archmage, you decide. Let me know below. Um, again, I don't know how these cards are going to pan out, the rares especially. This card strikes me as not very good, but I like to try things out early on in the format. There's really not much to lose other than your matches. But if I lose matches and gain the knowledge that this card and this card are just unplayable in the format, then I'll consider that a win in the long run. Mage Hunter seems decent. It's not like it actually does anything proactive other than being a decent body for four mana, but it does punish your opponent for casting spells, which this set encourages you to do. None of the commons really stick out to me. Reject is probably fine, but we'll see if the double major pans out. It could do some pretty interesting things. Uh, Serpentine Curve. Create a 0, zero with counters equal to 1 plus the number of instants and sorceries. So potentially either a really small fractal or a really big, depending on how many things you end up with, how many spells you end up with. Professor of Zoomancy seems really good to me, just a solid 4-mana four 4-3 four, that comes with a 1-1 one, one attached to it. This Cauldron is a little bit weird. If I'm playing it for just the backside, return up to 2 target creature, land, or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. Each player gains 5? I don't think I want to do that. The front half seems okay. You basically discard cards to uh, make pests. You can mill each opponent for cards equal to the amount of life you've gained this turn. I think I would rather stick down this line. This card seems a little bit wonky to me. Probably take the Professor of Zoomancy, even though it's not a spell. It's pretty good with double major, like just 
turn in your double major into another copy of this is fine. Hall monitor. I get it. Do you get the joke? Because I get it. Here, uh, I could take a campus. I assume you end up splashing a decent amount in this format, just because there are so many gold cards. It's pretty easy to get in that position. Vortex Runner is a 2-3 for 2 that becomes a 3-3 three, three unblockable once you control 8 or more lands. Fortifying Draught seems okay at best. It's a little telling that we're not seeing a gold card in these colors specifically. The Dimagoth is fine, and it works pretty well with the Professor of Zoom NC. This has to be sacrificed, though, right? Whenever you sacrifice this, each opponent discards. Kind of want to just take the campus because the only on color card here is this or this, and neither of them seem great. Um, could take the lesson as well, but let's just take the campus here. Don't play this card. We have Waterfall Aerialist, four mana, three one flyer, costs two more to target it with something. There is a Mage Hunter here. This card strikes me as just generically good. If you're in a black deck, you can probably get away with playing it. There is Archway Commons as well, which is basically Trans Guild Promenade or um, Plaza, the Gateway Plaza or whatever it's called. Nothing really sticking out to me here. This card's probably fine. Mage Hunter's probably fine, but it looks like I'm actually still trying to identify what's open here. Like the last pack had so many gold cards and this has so few gold cards. I don't have any lessons yet and I don't think Cram Session's very good even if I do. So let's just take more Mana Fixin. So Creative Outburst. There we go. That's a card I'm interested in playing. So Creative Outburst, this seems like the better of the non-rare, like expensive Izzity spells, right? You can always cycle it to make a treasure. I assume you're losing the game or you're desperate for lands if you're doing that. But if you do get to cast this spell, uh, it mops up pretty nicely. The creatures are not huge. I don't think Symmetry Sage is great. Curate's probably good. Just any spell that cantrips is probably decent here. Um, I could easily see going different directions. I have some mana fix in that could potentially overlap Quandrix with Prismari. This is definitely going to be my pick. I'm just kind of waffling around and seeing what else is here. There's another campus as well. I don't have any black cards. Third Mage Hunter. Curate's probably okay here. I think this card's pretty bad. This is the active treason of the set. Enthusiastic study, a combat trick that learns. Probably not bad. Excavated Wall seems okay as a blocker to make sure you have the time to cast spells like this, but it's not very good unless I guess you're in Lorehold and you care about having cards in your graveyard. I'm just going to take Curate. It's an easy card to just kind of fit into a deck, especially a deck that might care about casting spells. Um, here, okay, there's some stuff here. Scurry Colony seems pretty good. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, that becomes a 4-4 four, four reach uh, when you have 8 or more lands. Needle, Thorn, Drake. Just a run-of-the-mill card that's always going to trade for something. Perfectly fine. Fractal Summoning is one of the weaker lessons, but still decent. This card's okay as well. Why don't we go ahead and take... The, well, I don't need... See, this is where, you know, our first draft catches up to us because I don't know if these two cards, comparatively, which one's better... It strikes me that this one's actually better, but I'm going to take the gold card, because how do you not take the gold card? Spectacle Mage. This makes your instants and sorceries that cost five or greater one less to cast, which right now is Creative Outburst, and that's a good effect to have. Scry to then draw a card. This seems like a decent lesson if we can get it within the last couple cards. And then Tangle Trap. Basically, destroy a flyer or destroy an artifact. There aren't really artifacts you care about in this set, but destroying a flyer is always fine. I'll go ahead and take Windrake with a little bit of upside. Here, I think I'll probably just take Reject. Squirrel. Um, I don't like Grin and Ignis. I know this is a shout-out to these sorts of spells, but this seems like a really wonky way to go about casting those. Uh, Vortex Runners are also probably a fine card. Reject does trigger our Archmage. Emeritus. Yeah, Reject's probably fine. It's going to be Essence Scatter for the first portion of the game. Start from scratch. One damage to any target or destroy an artifact. This is a lesson. So it's actually not bad to pick this up. I could see trying out Serpentine Curve. It's also 2 minute 2-2 two -two with a pretty poor ability. If I draft like a ton of spells, this is technically a creature that will also trigger some of my other stuff. It doesn't work with double major, but looks like I've got a decent number of spells right now. 
Uh, so do we want Vortex Runner? Do we want this lesson? Or do we want another Spectacle Mage? I guess I'll take Vortex Runner as a hedge in case, like, this is it stuff or this Prismari stuff doesn't pan out. This card seems perfectly fine. As does the Waterfall Aerialist. I guess it is another 4-drop. I might just want to take the random 3-drop that keeps me alive. Trades off a little bit better. This card's probably just better, though. Let's take the better card. Another Kyrie or a Square Up turns a creature into a 4-4. Four, four. Hmm. I don't really have creatures that I care about turning into 4-4s, four, but I was going to take it there. Resculpt, I actually think, is quite good. All right, we picked up an Ephemerate here, which is um, a good card that's not going to make our deck. Same with Vanish Inverse, just an excellent card. Uh, probably loses a little bit of its value given just the pure number of gold cards floating around, especially given that those are some of the uh, best cards. I might take Teachings of the Archaics. I don't currently have anything that learns, I don't believe. But as a lesson, this is pretty good to have floating around the sideboard. I would never main deck this card, but as a lesson, this card's pretty good. There are also these cards on the bottom. Like, oh, there's also Carrick Wrangler. Five mana, three, three, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, copy an instant or sorcery, put a one, one counter on something. This is also a powerful card. Uh, apparently you can get, uh, is there a lesson in every pack? Is that what's going on here? Because there's multiple rares, actually three rares in this pack. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the correct card here, but I'm going to take the lesson and board it, and we'll see if we can pick up a learn card. Wow, Extus, and we're drafting like the three opposite colors that Extus is. Cool. Uh, I'm going to pass someone this bomb mythic rare, but I'm not even close to being able to cast it. Uh, that being said, I'm just going to take Frost Trickster. Like, how is this not the best pick out of uh, any pack that just doesn't have a slam dunk? Explosive Welcome seems interesting, but I've already got one of those spells. I don't think I need to pick up another one unless I'm incentivized to do so. This is not a Bayou Groff deck. Elemental Masterpiece. I, I would probably play one more of these. I think I would want Explosive Welcome. Well, I'm not sure which of these is better. My inclination is that Explosive Welcome is better, but Elemental Masterpiece might be better. Trickster's just good. Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is just a good card. And I'm confident enough in that that I'll take it and be really sad that I didn't open Extus in my first pack. Weather the Storm, not a card I care about unless uh, I really need to storm off for some reason. Here we have a lot of really good black cards that I can't cast. Obviously, I wish I was in black-white now, but that's not how the packs broke down. There's a Scurred Colony, and I probably need some two drops, so that might be my pick. There's also a Mage Duel, though. This card's really good. It's a three mana for plus one, plus two, and fight, but it costs only a single mana if you cast another spell that turn. I can see there being a lot of potential there. You know, cast Curate, cast Mage Duel. There's also a Serpentine Curve as well, and I feel like this is a card that gets better in multiples. Scurred Colony is also probably just a really good card to have, but let's go and take up the Mage Duel. I do not think this card is very good. It does ramp you, so if I had a bunch of these spells, this might be something I'd be interested in. But I don't have a lot of those, so I think this is just a mana rock that I'm just not interested in playing. I don't have any black, so I don't need Wither Bloom Campus. Not to mention that the scry abilities don't really overlap very much, so having multiple campuses isn't, like, great unless you just need the fixin'. I think Devour and Tendrils is okay. You basically have your creature. Th this is Rabid Bite, and then you gain two life if their creature dies. Campus Guide would also be acceptable. I need to pick up some creatures, like some early game creatures for sure. But Devouring Tendrils seems good to me. Oh, Tempted by the Auric. That's a good one. It does look like blue is kind of open. I don't remember ever seeing this card in my life. <laughs> I don't know where this one came from, uh, but it seems okay. I mean, Tech and Learn onto that ability is pretty good. These sorts of effects are always underrated. There's another Tendrils, but there is a Tempted by the Auric, which is a uh, one blue, 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 and you take a card with mana cost three or less you know on the lower end of control magics but still a control magic assuming i can actually cast the spell wormhole serpent seems very good to me devouring tendrils probably isn't great in my deck at least not great enough that i want to pick up another one already having two of these fight spells there's quandric pledge mage like i could see an argument for a lot of these cards but again try out the rare test of talents one in a blue counter target instant or sorcery search it's a uh, yeah no uh no thank you this is add one of any color, sack it to draw a card for two mana, so a mana lift that you can sack later on. 
That actually seems decent. This is blue blue in our deck for the most part, and it can attack whenever you magecraft. Practical research, this card's very good. Probably my pick over letter of acceptance. Draw four and then discard two unless you discard an instant or sorcery. Uh, if I'm going to be casting these big spells and using these to refill my hand, I need to find early game play, so maybe that should be my priority. Twos and three drops. Threes are probably fine. Like, I would play a two, four vanilla in this deck. This one gets a counter with Magecraft, and this is one of those creatures that shrinks something. Minus one, minus oh. I think I'll just take the Quandrix Pledge Mage. Cast one spell, and this is a three mana, three, three that potentially comes bigger. I'm pretty... Pretty set on spells. I've got a decent number of spells here. This card seems like something I could get later in the draft if I really wanted it. Negate. Prismari Apprentice. Teach by example. And another Arcane Subtraction. This card I don't think is actually great. If you are in, like, full-on Prismari, then it's fine. But I don't think I'm going to take it um, off of a splash. There's actually a lot of cards here. This is a learn card, and I do have a lesson sitting in my sideboard. But I'm just going to take the two drop here. As much as I want, like, Field Trip... I'm going to take just a two drop that I can trade off. I don't know how aggressive things are, but I don't want to go into a new format just not having my bases covered. The Wrangler Wield, Serpentine Curve Wield as well. Carrick Wrangler seems very strong to me. Um, Probably my pick over the curve. And there's also a Pledge Mage, so it does feel like either black, white, or blue, green is the right place to be. I could see not playing this card and just trying to naturally get um, up in mana. The Wheel and some of this stuff. Wield the Explosive Welcome. Also wield a Reject. Do we want Reject here is the question. Teachings would be in my sideboard. Never main deck that card. I don't think I want another expensive Is It spell right now is the thing. Might take Reject. Could see Explosive Welcome being really good though. All right, Scurred Colony number two or Serpentine Curve number two. Our deck really does care about casting spells. We do have a decent number of, uh, whatchamacallit, Magecraft cards. I'm going to take the Serpentine Curve. It is just kind of a vanilla creature, but that's fine. I don't think I want a second Resculpt. This isn't a deck that really cares about that. Crash Through seems pretty bad, although it does cantrip and trigger Magecraft could just take a campus though i'll take crash through here arcane subtraction what's big play plus two plus two gains reach till end of turn put a one one counter on it it's not bad i do think i'm just going to take this arcane subtraction though and have a learn card that i can cast and stay alive with uh never cast in this card in my life i don't believe and we're not sideboarding so i'll put this in and probably end up not playing it yeah, we got blue cards back blue sun zenith hello youch look at this so quandrix command on color rare command but also blue sun zenith has just like massive card draw yikes mm, this this is a tough pick i'm not sure which one of these i'm supposed to take it does feel like I'm going to wheel, like, some of these. Maybe not Wormhole Serpent, but if I wheel, like, Letter, Curve, if this comes back, that would be amazing, but it's not going to. It's, you know, a flashy command, and it's a rare. I think Blue Sun Zenith. First off, I want to play with these Mystical Archive cards when I get them, and this card is also very good if the game goes long, so let's just take Blue Sun Zenith and be sad about it. Body of Research, too. Cultivate would be really good in this deck. Biomathematician's good. Field Trip's good. Let's just take... <laughs> I know it's awkward and this card's actually not that great, but let's take it. Blue, 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 green, green, green. Can't ever cast it. That's probably fine. Who, like, what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? I can see also cutting down to just be a blue, green deck here. Like, Spectacle Mage is fine and all. Maybe I... Uh, play this i guess creative outburst can actually help cast this this is just a giant vanilla creature so it's not even like that amazing <laughs> but uh it's a flashy mythic and you know it, it'll be cool to win with if nothing else uh Barry and books is okay draconic intervention i think is actually a very strong card especially alongside something like this uh red red is probably a problem though Cast, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery or no that's not what this does 
Um, this is the Wrath. Deals damage equal to the exiled spell's cost. Overgrown Arch seems okay. A defender that can just gain some life. Burying books is also probably fine. I'm going to get all my cards back. <laughs> Village rights. Okay, expressive iteration's good. Reckless ample amancer's probably fine. There's another mage duel. Plus one, plus two, and fight is really good. This is not good for our deck. We don't need a Warhold Campus, that's for sure. I don't want to splash this card, and it's a little wonky. Expressive Iteration is a good card, but not great off a of splash. I could take Environmental Sciences. You know, in a very slow game, if I end up with another Learn card or two, I could see this being decent. Mage Duel is probably the correct pick, though. Let's just take the Mage Duel. Another Explosive Welcome, another Serpentine Curve, another Frost Trickster. I'm just going to take that. I know this is a spell and blah, 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 and gets better. I'm just going to take Trickster. Like, seems hard to go wrong with that. I feel this is going to be my most drafted common, like 100%. <laughs> there, there's really zero way it can't be. This does not look like a deck that cares about Resculpt. Uh, Snow Day, six mana, tap up to two target creatures. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Draw two cards, discard a card. That's a lot going on. Uh, Quandrix Apprentice seems really good though. It's a two drop, so it can trade off with the best of them. And then every time I cast a spell, I get to look at the top three and get a land. Seems really good. I think this deck would be interested in playing Strategic Planet, maybe less so now since I have two curates. And Snow Day seems like cute, but not amazing. I will take the Apprentice. Another Snow Day, another Trickster, Eureka Moment. Draw two cards, put a land from your hand on the battlefield. Th this is just an embarrassment of riches at this point. Biomathematician is also very good. Um, trickster number three for me, though. Whirlwind Denial, another Quandrix Apprentice, another Biomathematician. Pop Quiz, Introduction. I could feasibly play, like, six cards in this pack. I think I just want another Apprentice, though. Is that right? Is Biomathematician better than the second Apprentice? I don't think this card is better. I already have a lot of card draw as it is. All right, we'll take another Apprentice. The Wormhole Serpent came back. You know, everything came back. Uh, wormhole? I think I can cut... I, I think I can just be blue-green here. And this card is technically blue-blue, but I picked up enough two drops. What? This Wormhole Serpent plus, like, this is probably how I'm trying to win the game. Fractal Summoning. Biomathematician seems better. I know this is a spell and it's a lesson, but it's not a particularly good lesson, and I only have one card that learns, so having this around doesn't seem great. Biomathematician's just good. I don't have a ton of Fractal stuff going on, but it puts two bodies on board. Uh, Pledge Mage, Burying Books, Serpentine Curve. I don't actually have a ton of removal, which is notable. Burying Books is uh, totally lost but it costs less mana if it targets an attacking creature. Maybe I just want Quandrix Pledge Mage. Maybe I want another Serpentine Curve. Maybe I just want to make giant <laughs> dorks. Like, I think I ended up fine on two drops. Double Major is probably not great in this deck. I guess Double Major Frost Trickster is pretty good. I'm going to take the Uncommon for my collection here, honestly. All right, we're going to Curve out, I guess. I don't know if... Th that's probably pushing it, right? Snow Day, and a 2-4. All right, we got some stuff to do. We we definitely ended up in a color pair that seemed open. We have 56 playables. Well, we have 56 cards, I should say. Uh, I have one lesson. It's not a particularly good one, but it's useful in situations where I can just pick it up. It is a free card as well off of the one card that learns. It's not good enough that I would main deck it, but if I pick it up for free and it ends up doing something with the arcane subtraction, that's fine. I think I want to get rid of just this random cantrip. And I think I want to get rid of creative outburst because I think I want to be heavy blue green, especially given that I have like this card, this card. That being said, I think I still play Prismari Campus as a one-off, right? I could actually go something like this. 14, 15, 16, 17. 
that would be nine blue sources, nine or eight green sources, and I could have practical research as well. I have blue sun zenith. I don't know if I need practical research. For the same mana, this is just draw two. This is kind of expensive card draw though. I want I should probably just cut red altogether. I have Archward Emeritus. I have the Quandrix Apprentices, which are good at, you know, they draw cards technically, but they always draw lands. I have a couple curates to find stuff. This is, doesn't seem like a deck that wants Resculpt. This card could be okay. All right, let's go ahead and cut the red here and just try out straight up Quandrix and see how it works, which means I'm going to get rid of the Mountain. I'm going to get rid of the Archway Commons, but I'm actually going to keep Prismari Campus here. It's basically a tapped island that I can use to scry later on in the game, and that seems worth one land slot, right? Obviously, I wish this was a, a Quandrix. Um, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm mincing words here because I'm too excited. All right, double major actually seems a little on the weak side, and the reason is some of our better creatures are actually spells, and this doesn't work with them. Yeah, it's okay with some of the two drops. Like on turn four, if you go cast Quandrix Apprentice, double major it. That seems okay, and this will trigger our spellcraft stuff, but I could also just like cast two creatures. So, oh, hello, Mr. Car. Goodbye, Mr. Car. Mm, I like the rejects. I think this card's pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and ditch that. This is going to take a minute. I've got 10 more cuts I need to make. 10 more cuts. I wonder if I could just get away with playing an additional land as well, given that I have two Quandrix Apprentices. I have a lot of card draw. All right, Spine Kara can go. Uh, I have three fight spells, and my creatures aren't particularly big. I think if I go like Devour and Tendrils plus Mage Duel, that's probably fine. I wonder if the other Mage Duel is just better than Devouring Tendrils. Uh, probably trim a curate. This thing can probably go. I'll need to do like a spell count when all is said and done here as well. Snow day seems a little cutesy, but actually seems decent. Vortex runner. Not bad at all. Professor of Zoomancy. Problem is these cards all feel pretty good to me. Waterfall aerialist seems okay. This is like up here realistically. This card seems good. It just always trades with something. Maybe I can trim a reject. I don't want to trim too many spells is the problem. Maybe four serpentine curves is egregious. I I'm leaning towards like just going as spell heavy as possible and cutting like these two, but that seems wrong. These are very solid cards. Maybe go down to three just so I don't get flooded on serpentine curves. After all, this just makes a vanilla creature, right? If, I, if this is my turn four play, it makes a 1-1. One, one. I have to have cast other spells first, so I might be talking myself down on Serpentine Curve a little bit. Um, Yeah, let's try two for now. Still four more cards to cut. It's ridiculous. This is absolutely nuts. Again, though, it's it's really hard to make cuts here because I want to keep my spell density high. The 3-1 flyer seems good, but a couple of tricksters backed up by just like some fight spells and some removal spells, counter spells, stuff like that seems fine. I don't actually have a lot of removal spells, and I don't have like amazing blockers either. So if there is a dedicated aggro deck, like a Silver Quill aggro deck, I might have problems against it. I think later on down the line, I wouldn't even be playing this card, but I want to try it out. Maybe I can cut Snow Day. Tap two creatures. Get them out of the way. Or maybe I cut some of the creature stuff. Like, I could see Vortex Runner going away here. Yeah, Vortex Runner's probably okay, but we can cut it. Maybe Snow Day's the last cut. The Wrangler seems good. Again, a card that I don't know if... 
like Arch Lord Emeritus and Carrick Wrangler are kind of the type of cards I'm skeptical about. They're just so understated but have very powerful Magecraft abilities. I just don't know if you're going to have time to be like casting spells and using these cards, right? Let's go ahead and trim Snow Day here. And we'll see how this deck works out. I imagine if I win games, it's going to be off the back of just a bunch of tricksters buying me time and attacking in the air. But there's like the cool potential to go like Wormhole Serpent into Body of Research. Or just make like a reasonably sized Serpentine Curve attack i like reject like if this was two essence scatters i would just be playing two essence scatters here my spell count i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven seems high enough it's not like super crazy high but it seems high enough you still have to have creatures right and it seems like i've got enough card draw and enough ways to kind of like keep the game going in my favor Plus I have actual finishers and I have a little bit of a game plan here. I don't have a lot of disruption is the problem. So we're going to have to lean pretty heavily on these rejects and probably this tempt nine islands a little awkward. <laughs> blue, 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 blue. What could go wrong? All right, ship it. We got a Quandrix deck here. I don't know if Quandrix has been working out for people or not, but we're going to go ahead and try it out. Uh, again, best of one matches up to seven wins or three losses, whichever comes first. Uh, let's see what Quandrix can do. I'll see you all in match number one. All right, we're here for match number one. I'm on the play, have what looks to be a pretty good hand. I can just go like Apprentice into this to kill their two drop and probably hit another land, play this on turn four. I can also go this into Mage Duel and just guarantee I can kill whatever they hit. Um, it's worth noting the fight spells are good with this Death Toucher. Especially the other one. What is it? Tendrils of something? devouring tendrils that one is just a punch it's not even a fight so you get to keep this creature but i think our plan here is to go apprentice apprentice on turn two and probably fight if they don't give us a good fight target we'll go for something else we have arch lord emeritus set up as well all right i expect to see a lot of stuff like this just splashing blood age general attack and spirits get plus one plus oh as a tap ability and it's just a two two all right, this was a nice little card to bridge the gap here. I don't think I'm going to offer a trade, but I'm going to play a Biomathematician, which will make a Fractal. And when this enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 counter on all of your other Fractals. So if I play another one, which I don't actually have, then we put a counter on this one as well. Cool token. This is basically 2-2. Opponent holding up perhaps some sort of counter magic, some sort of removal spell. I don't think this is the card I want to expose to that, though. Could probably just attack with this and see what happens. If they got the little befuddly, befuddly, muddly person, that's fine. Yeah, I'll attack with Biomathematician here. I'm not super worried about my opponent killing my Mathematician. And I'll just play this. If it gets countered, it gets countered. So I believe this has to be another instant or sorcery. It'd be really nice. All right, opponent holding up Curate, although it's worth noting that does not rule out them having some other sort of spell. They could be holding Counter Magic plus Curate and deemed it not necessary to interact with my cards and just curate it instead, which is fine by me. They took two. They didn't add to their board. They cycled. Uh, Verdant, Mas Verdant Mastery. So they paid the four mana cost. They're actually going to ramp me here. They're going to get two lands on the battlefield. They're going to put a land into play under my control, and then they're going to put another land in their hand. Uh, at least I believe that's what it does. So they gave me a mountain. Oh, that'd be so nice if I just cast a red card. All right. They got a bunch of extra mana. They ramped me, which is pretty pretty nice of them. Carrick Wrangler. It's a good one. I think I'm going to lead with the Wormhole Serpent, though. Not playing a land this turn, though, kind of sucks. And they're kind of set up to do... I mean, if they go, what, expressive, whatever, they kill three creatures, or they kill this, this, and this, that would suck. But I think that's where I'm at. Maybe I offer trades here. I definitely attack with these two. 
Yeah, it looks like they're setting up to cast one of those big spells. I'm going to play the Wormhole Serpent. Uh, Alright, let's see what we're getting destroyed by here. What big Prismari card do you have? I assume that's the only reason you would play this card in your deck. Elemental Masterpiece. Okay. One's actually not too bad. Um, doesn't rule out them having something else either. I want to leave my creatures on defense now as well. I could fight one of these. <sighs> kind of sucks I can't double spell. Like, this needs to be a curate for sure. I need to have curate. I wonder which creature I get down here. Probably this one just uses my mana better. All right, I'll play this and pass the turn. Elemental Masterpiece, fine card. All right, eight mana, more big things. Solve the equation. Okay, search for an instant or sorcery and put it in your hand. So now they're going to go get whatever the best spell in their deck is. Uh, culmination of Studies. All right, that's going to do some stuff, but uh, this card's actually not amazing. It, it's going to draw them a decent number of cards. All right, that card is amazing. So they're going to learn. I mean, they're getting a lot of, like, spells, right? <laughs> Elemental Summon and make a 4-4. Four, four. Sure. I'm going to keep my Wrangler. All right, so now what do we want to do? I really want to get this Emeritus down. So they're going to make a bunch of... I mean, they're going to make some combination of, like, drawing cards, pinging me, and making treasure tokens. There's some merit, I think, to go in this into Mage Duel. Having it, fighting off one of the 4-4s. Four also triggers this, hits more lands. Like, the greedy thing is to play Emeritus here. But I think I want to go this. And I want to just fight off a 4-4 four, four here. What do I want to fight it with is the question. Plus 1, plus 2. So it's got to be, like, this. Hmm. I think they have anything for 1 mana. They could. Uh, this fights this. Put a plus 1 counter on... Maybe just the apprentice. This is gonna become a three five or a four five, so this is surviving. Put counters here, probably doesn't matter. Get this up to a four six. Oh, well, there goes the body of research. And the arcane subtraction would be good here too. Uh don't have a great attack here though. Wormhole Serpent could be our key to win in a game like this, though. I hope they go for this. I mean, it, it's going to deal some damage, but it's... I don't know. We'll, we'll see what it does. It's an interesting card. I'll let you read it here. Flame Scroll Celebrant. So whenever I activate an ability, it gets... or it deals a damage to me. I don't currently have any activated abilities on board. Also drew some blanks here. I kind of want to wait to cast this for when I can cast it plus cast a spell, so I kind of like the idea of going Wormhole Serpent. I should have put the counter on something else. I could put it on its... or I could just attack with this, right? They're at 17. It's probably best to just play this. This thing gets plus 2 plus 0 for 2 mana. That's okay. Let's play Emeritus and pass. And I really, really, really need to draw spells here. Spells do a lot for me. They draw me into lands. They put counters on my creatures. Okay. Yeah, opponent's got a lot of stuff. I don't know why. Like, they're holding on to this for, like, a ton more mana than they've got. I guess this discounts this, so it's better next turn while this is on board. But the fact that they're casting spells like this makes me feel a little bit better. I should probably be bashing a little more than they are. They're really scared of this needle tooth drake, it seems. I'm just gonna take two. They can get this card back somehow. If it's in the graveyard and they would learn, they can get it back. Alright, curate is awesome here. 
It draws me a card, puts a counter on just so many different things. Oh, it's so good. I think I want to put counters here. That thing's going to get bigger more uh, quicker than most of my other creatures. Get a spell, or rather, get a land. Draw into Tempted by the Auric. Frost Trickster for sure. This is the Curate. Let's put that on the bottom. Oh, these go Graveyard. Wait, what's happening right now? What am what am I? Uh, I'm a little confused at what's happening right now. The curate is resolving, correct? Hello, uh, hello. <laughs> Okay, some something weird's happening there. Done. Looking at that. View browser. Let's just click done. Drag cards. Uh oh, I see. It wouldn't let me go back. That's not what I wanted to do at all, but okay. I can take a creature here. I think I just want to take their flyer. Take their stupid spectacle mage. I could also take this, but I can start bashing now. I could go Quandrix, attack for five here. Just play that, let them use their turn on that. Which is probably going to do something decent, but nothing super amazing. Let me take this. I'm just going to, yeah, let's just do that. Uh, Play this first, just to draw a bunch of lands. Been in that Frost Trickster kind of sucks. It's not what I intended to do. Tempted by the Auric on your Spectacle Mage. Trigger, 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 trigger. Plus one counter on... Uh, spread it out a little bit, make it harder for them to kill. Return, okay, they're going to bounce that, so I'm not going to take control of it. Grab that. Uh, I'll take a campus over a basic here. Draw blue sun zenith. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I'll attack them for one. Maybe I won't. All right, setting up for next turn. It's worth noting Wormhole Serpent will shoot me for one, but search your library for a basic reveal, put in your hand, gain two life, okay? Yep. I don't think this card's going to win them the game. Dragon's Approach? <laughs> deal three to me. Three mana deal three to me. Okay. Um, I don't even know what to think about that. Ah, Trickster 2. All right, let's play the campus. Let's, I mean, we can just start bashing so hard here. I can even like throw my creatures into things. I like the idea of just going wormhole serpent attack you for six. I have five, six, seven, eight. I can attack for 10 here and then next turn attack for 10 again. Hmm. All right, let's go like this. That is not what I meant to cast. <laughs> I meant to activate Wormhole Serpent, but that's fine. That's okay. Tap one of these four fours. Or tap a bird. I'll tap a four four. And then, oh, I'm going to waste this mana. I'm just going to cast this now. I want to use that mana. I, I shouldn't have played the Trickster. I screwed up a little bit, but it's fine. Let's start putting counters on the flyer. Grab land. Grab land. Draw a card from Emeritus. Zenith puts itself back. Body of Research. 
Am I gonna deck myself here? It's funny because you you normally can't deck yourself while you have a <laughs> blue sun zenith, but it triggers this, which draws a card. So, um, no attacks this turn. Next turn will actually start engaging the kill them part of this game. Is this a may ability? You may reveal. We'll probably start stop revealing at this point. <laughs> All right, go for the culmination. I want to see what this card can do. You've got uh, two, one, seven, eight, nine mana. You can culmination for nine here. I'll actually trade off Emeritus at this point. <laughs> this isn't even that big. It's not even that big. This is pretty good. Just clears any creature out of the way at this point. Seems like my opponent is trying to... F well, no, they're looking at my cards. Is this an instant? It's a sorcery. They've got something they would rather cast. This doesn't interact particularly favorably with stuff like that. Um, well, time to start attacking, I think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can wormhole twice and I can still keep up reject. This is a sorcery, so not too big of a deal. Alright. Let's start wormholing the big things. I'm fine trading one for seven here. Uh could also just curve body. They could have the thing that puts something on top of my library and they're just looking to get better value by waiting for me to attack. I could totally see that being a thing that's happening here. Uh, made these two unblockable. Correct. All right, 11 unblockable coming in. If you put one on top, that's fine. Could also take a million. Let's just keep reject up. Reject, I mean, it's not like I'm gonna really get them. So this is 10 now. I mean, that's going to do a lot. Oh, and they're keeping up mana as well. So this is 8, 9, 10, 11. They can do it for... They have 12 mana. They can do it for 10. Let's see if they actually click 10 or 9 here. They might forget about the Spectacle Mage. I'm pretty excited to see what it does. I hope it's all blue cards. They just deck themselves. All right. So ooh, a lot of gold cards channel in their deck. Another dragon's approach. They made one mana though. Hall monitor. Okay. So I believe they are dead. Yep. Smart attack. Might as well go for it. Uh, block, block, block. Uh, da, 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 da. oh no, that's gonna block a flyer. Block this. Emeritus can actually go at this point. Wormhole this here. Wormhole here, and I'm taking two this way. Yeah, the fact that they only made one mana there, it's kind of crazy. Want a good game them. All right, I feel like that could have gone much worse for us, given how, like, they 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 learned once, they fetched up any instant or sorcery from their library. They had a lot of extra cards there, but they didn't really interact with our creatures when we got our stuff going. So that was a nice little showing from our end, and uh, apparently we can draw a bunch of cards when we're uninterrupted. We'll see what happens when we play against the aggro decks, though. So <laughs> match two coming up. See you there. All right, welcome back to match number two. Pretty easy keep. Just campus into land. Got our mana ready. We've got to reject on turn two if we need it. Got a Frost Trickster start beating down. Probably go like Biomathematician into Frost Trickster. Uh, yeah, see if we end up using this reject or not. It only hits creatures or planeswalkers. Cannot counter instance or sorcery, which is kind of a knock against it. All right, Black White. I will counter this. Maybe I should save it, but that card can attack us basically 2-mana two 2-2 two two next turn. 
So I'm doing this, obviously, for, I mean, I don't need to explain why I'm ordering this before casting this. I just get a better attack this way. I hit for three next turn when they play their blocker. Killian is very good. Anything you do that targets a creature costs two less. Boom. Target a creature costs two less. Um, we are going to get in for three here, though. I mean, they could have a three mana spell. Killian also has Lifelink Menace. Like, what in the world? If I draw a land next turn, I'm just going to play the Wrangler. Spectre of the Fens, 2-3 Flyer, has some, some random text. Um, oh, I'm just going to attack some more. Keep back the Fractals so I can double block Killian. If they attack, I'm not going to block, though, obviously. I'm missing a point of damage, but I'm representing them needing to do something. Spectre of the Fens is kind of annoying. It's also annoying I didn't hit my fifth land. Probably want to trim a creature for the other... Did I take a Curate out? I probably, first off, don't want two of these over two Curates, if that's the case. Lash of Malice, sure. That costs two less for them to cast. Would have been, I think, significantly better for them to attack first, because I represented that I wanted to double block. I don't know what's in this set, though. All right, they're holding up something as well. Let's play the land... Yep, they've got something here. Flash threats in black and white. Not 100% sure. Could just be a kill spell. All my creatures are vanilla at this point. So they want to use a removal spell on a 2-2. Two -two, that's okay. Take 5. Can play these two or play the 5-5. Five -five. Gives me more flexibility on later turns. If I have the more expensive card already out. Do, do get to free roll the attack. Yeah, I'll play this. They're, they're probably going to kill it on instep, I assume. They could also be cast in some sort of, like, inkling thing here. I assume this Wrangler's just about to die, would be my guess. So at six mana, this is... It's not tap, it's target player. Sure, closing statement. You know, that pretty good. Oh, this gets counters. Oh, this puts a counter on it. Okay, Killian's going to be an issue here. It has lifelink, it races us, I can't get past this 2-3. Killian's very good. I only have two cards left. Serpentine Curve looking pretty weak here. So we're going to go creature, creature, and just hold off for now. They're going to activate this on end step, and that's going to be their game plan for now. It's going to be a pretty good one. Um, yeah, I, I, it looks like I need to cut... Like, I just need to find another cut for more spells here, I think. Maybe that's wrong, but... Alright, activate Spectre, swap life totals. Okay, they drew a Campus. Somewhere to sink mana other than the Spectre, I suppose. Still have two cards in hand. Killian attacks, I'm just gonna block with, like, three things <laughs> attack with the specter okay and they're pretty convinced i'm not going to be able to deal with their killian then they also have this specter so it's going to be easier for them to kill me than for me to kill them mage duel is very nice so i can go serpentine curve per first set up the mage duel to cost one less yeah i actually have to do it in that order um and it's trying to tap me, tap that green down. It's really trying to mess me up there. All right, so this hopefully finds me another land. Problem is they have mana up. So going for Mage Duel here seems a little sketch. Body of Research could race them, but I can't cast it. Okay, counter. Let's go Forest. Hmm, if it's another closing statement... I mean, if, the, if it's exactly another closing statement, then I'm screwed. Plus, the only creature that can actually kill Killian right now is this Pledge Mage. I wonder if I'm supposed to just go for it. A Pump Spell would be pretty bad. So this would be 4, 6, 
five, six. I think I'd go for it. Let's try to get Killian out of the way. And if they kill this Pledge Mage, I'd probably just lose the game on the spot. Okay, they're just activating Spectre. All right, so Killian down. This is a fight, so they go up to 20, but I get the Bash. Down to eight, not bad. And just throw eight creatures at this point to get in some damage. You can see how more Biomathematicians would be good, right? Rite of Extus, exile a creature and exile an instant or sorcery from my graveyard and learn. Inkling summon in, pretty good. Well, my good attacker's gone. I can push in seven damage. They have another Lash of Malice in hand? Or are they figuring out whether to... Oh, they're in They're in combat. Devouring Tendrils. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Um, I do have to throw away a creature here. So if I attack with everything, this is going to block here. Uh, they're going to go down to one, and then I'm going to Tendrils to kill that off. I won't get any value off of this Apprentice. Maybe they kill the Trickster instead, though, instead of the Apprentice. Either way, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to just jam everything here. Okay, that's actually good, because I want this Apprentice around. Okay. They were, they're ghosting. They were watching the stream. All right, so we do, however, get to start using our campus. This on this. Spectre is gone. I gain two life, which is nice. And the turn with campus up. So this is going to be a 2-1. I mean, they have to block everything. Every creature I have is a lethal threat now. Oh, well, that is a good one. I wonder if that was stuck in their hand and they just couldn't play it because of the legendary rule. And then Inkling Summon in. Yeah, this stabilizes. Although if I can just get Killian off board, it's probably okay. Uh, we'll put that on bottom. Do I scry on upkeep? I don't believe so. Scurred Colony. Scurred? It's actually not a bad draw. Oh, wait, they didn't play the Inkling Summon in. You may pay two life. Oh, they left themselves dead to the flyer. Okay, cool. I think they were supposed to play that one. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> it makes things a little bit easier to me, for me. Um, I, they might have just misclicked. They were supposed to play the Inkling Summon, obviously, in which case game becomes a little bit harder for me. But uh, nice. Pick up another one against Black White, which is one of the decks that scares me for sure. But uh, I'm kind of liking how our deck is playing out. And uh, oh, oh, we actually want to look at it again real quick before we jump into match number three. I do want the second Curate. I am playing 17 lands, which means I need to cut one more thing. Maybe the Serpentine Curves just aren't that great. Maybe I'm, I'm going to cut one of the Rejects for a Curate, and we'll try that out. So this will be match three coming up. See you there. All right, what do we have here? So we can't cast this Needle Thorn Drake. I'm also on the draw, um, which I guess makes this fine. Like, this replaces itself with a card. I can still cast Ple Quandrix Pledge Mage. If I draw Forest, this hand's great, and I can Curate on turn two. Yeah, let's try it out. This is also good in conjunction with the Death Toucher, but we'll have to draw Forest to make that matter. We drew a Serpentine Curve. I'll have to check the, whatchamacallit, the way this worked, because it did some wonky stuff when I cast it last time. Campus Guide for Forest. Looks like Teamer Colors. Pretty popular. I did, in fact, draw Forest, though. Will I trade this off for Campus Guide? No, definitely not. I'm probably going to play this next turn, just take a couple beats, and then set myself up to double spell on turn four. Depends, of course, what they play. Field Trip's nice. So they get to Rampant Growth and Learn. A lot of value from one card. Another deck that looks like it's probably playing one of those big Is It cards, one of those Prismari cards. They got Fractal Summon. I'm actually not super worried about that one. If they cast it next turn, it's a 3-3. It's probably a problem down the line, but it is not a problem currently, and that is okay. 
Let's go Island, attack for one, play Quandrix Pledge Mage. Looks like this curve's going to be valuable. So we're looking to go Curate plus Arcane Subtraction at some point just to kind of trade this. Campus guy getting in there. This is a this is a mean campus guide. All right, Cultivate, you've got mana. You have colors and mana. Swamp. Oh, dear. No planes, though, thank God. All right, opponent is set up for sure. <laughs> so what are we going to do here? We're going to curate first just so that we attack better. Probably, <sighs> do I just attack with this Needlethorn Drake? Take two. I think I want to cast this. Oh, we got another car outside. Thank you, Mr. Car. Yeah, let's go ahead and curate here. Opponent's got some sort of interaction up. Uh, I will definitely take this. So... Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top. So I submitted that last time, I see, and I couldn't go back. I understand now. It's two separate windows. I do want that. I want to draw it. I want to play Forest, and I want to attack with Quandrix Pledge Mage. I want to pass the turn, holding up Arcane Subtraction here for the attack. And yeah, I'll, you know, I'll just... We'll, we'll let this happen. Get this 2-1 off board. Trigger my Pledge Mage. All of this is fine. See if they have Expressive Outburst, the card that I'm probably most scared of. Snakeskin Veil? Ooh, nice. They countered my learn, too, so they basically, like... Oh, wait, hold on. I still have Death Touch, though. So they basically stopped me from warning. This is an interesting card. It's just a 2-3 right now kill it whenever you so it doesn't do anything interesting with the fight stuff hmm it's another situation where i could just fire this off i could also just play a serpentine curve and make a 4-4 here and attack for five that seems just as good do this before combat okay opponent doesn't seem to have an instant for three mana so Reflective Golem makes it so that if you target this with an instant or sorcery, you can pay two to copy it. Makes your pump spells very good. Opponent has eight mana now. Are we going to see a big Fractal Summon in, or are we going to see something else? All right, 6-6 six, six Fractal Summon in is nice, because I can just Devour and Tendrils that off, which I'm going to do, and that lets me hold up Blue Sun Zenith for one. Um, yeah, this works. So go green, blue. This will... Punch this as a 6-6, six, six, attack for 9. I guess I can blue sun zenith for 1 here. Okay, opponent jump box. I would rather get more value off of the blue sun zenith, especially given that they blocked. Two cards in hand. Pillar drop warden. Reach, notably. Letter of acceptance. That can cycle to draw a card. So... Uh, if that's what you were going to do, probably should have done that first. Oh. Uh, shoot. <laughs> um, well. They block this. What does this do? Sacrifice it. Return target instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand at sorcery speed. I mean, it kind of doesn't do anything right now. Can't take it. Yeah, I'm just going to attack with both. See if they block this Pledge Mage or not. That's fine. And I'll just hold up Blue Sun on the end step. Draw what? One, two, three. Draw four cards. All right, you got one card. It is a 4-4 four, four reach. It's pretty good. My Quandrix Pledge Mage is still just going to be bashing here, though. Actually, they're just dead, right? Yeah, they're just dead. I guess, yeah, none of these spells do anything. Oh, that's not true. So I could tempted by the Auroch this. They could get back Snakeskin Veil, but then they're down a blocker. I think they're dead no matter what. I don't see a way out of this. Turn it, like, sacking that to get back Fractal Summon in is just putting a different creature on board. There's no way for them to get past the cards that I have in my hand. So, pass. I will draw four cards, please. I will target myself. 
Yeah, Blue Sun Zenith seems busted. That also seems pretty busted. Let's just do this the easy way. And they F6. Very nice. Very nice. We have a lot of blue rares now that I think about it. <laughs> um, the snakeskin veil was a little interesting. You know, they their creature still died. I guess they killed my creature more significantly, and they stopped me from learning, so it's they, they denied me card advantage, which is nice. Um, that being said, we're at 3-0. and Let's see if we can keep this rolling right into match number four. See you there. All right, we are back on the draw again with a decent hand that needs to draw basically just a ton of lands. Got a 2-2. Ooh, Lorehold. Well, maybe Lorehold. That's a good draw. Sets me up to potentially find more lands. So let's see. Red or white mana? Show me red or white mana. Ah, holding up a removal spell, I see. I'm um, still going to play this and they kill it, then so be it. I could hold up Reject. It doesn't seem necessary. Highest upside here of just resolving this card. All right, well, it wasn't an instant speed way to kill it. All right, Ingenious Inspiration's a good card. They're going to kill my thing. They're going to learn, so two for one. They got Inkling Summon in, which they can cast off of white mana. Pretty good. That was excellent, actually. My Auric thing's going to be decent, too. However, I do need to draw um, more mana, more lands, rather. Biomathematician attacks through this pretty nicely. Uh, minor two for one. Opponent, I think, pretty smart to kill that. Selfless Glyph Weaver. Awkward target for this. So you can exile it to give all your creatures indestructible. That's probably okay. I'm curating, looking for an untapped land so I can hold up Reject here. The back half of this card is amazing, by the way. Uh, yeah. I, oh, hold on. Put any of number of them into the graveyard. So I think I'm fine drawing another Curate next turn, right? Or would I rather just draw the land? Hmm. I think I'm going to put the Curate in the graveyard, keep the Forest on top and draw it, and then hope to just spike another land for, like, this Karak Wrangler. Play this, pass turn. Unfortunately, Reject can't actually counter Inkling Summon in. Notably, opponent missed a land, though. So they might just go Inkling Summon in here anyway. Illustrious Historian... Uh, exile it from your graveyard to make a 3-2, and it trades off with my guys. Pretty annoying, and this exiles it, so it gets rid of it permanently. Let's just use our mana while we've got it. If they attack, I'll double block. Archmage... <laughs> Archmage... What? Um, yeah, we're just going to cast that and pass the turn. It's kind of like a race right now. Are you going to find more lands, or am I going to find more spells? Like, blue mana here is excellent. I can just blue sun zenith for two, which draws a card off Emeritus. Tome Shredder is a nice one. Haste, exile an instant or sorcery to put a counter. They have one in the graveyard. That being said, it's also a good target for my Tempted by the Auric. Ah, nice. Very nice. Well, I'll just flood the board with a couple more 2-2s two here. They're going to make that a 3-3. Three, three. Still struggling for mana, I see. They did not Tome Shredder, though, interestingly enough. They probably have a card in their hand that gets a spell back from their graveyard, then. There's like a 6-mana 3-2 flyer in those colors. Uh, whenever one or more cards leaves your graveyard, deals 1 damage to each opponent. That's fine. This is not the land I wanted, but it will let me cast the Wrangler. I'm all set up now. I just need to draw an Island. And they're actually going to probably start beating down. Come on, Island or one of the fight spells would be okay here. The actual fight would be just fine, and the punch would be pretty good too. If this attacks me, I probably put like these two in front of it, and they can choose whether to sack the Glyph Weaver or not. 
I could also just have a pump spell. I do feel like I'm falling behind, but I feel like I'm pretty set up to um, do fine if I draw spells here, or if I draw an island. Island's nice. Island two for ones them easily enough. So let's see what they've got. Obviously some sort of trick. God's willing. Sure. Pro blue. Something else. All right, so they traded God's willing for my biomathematician. It's okay. Into inkling summoning, sure. All right, we drew island. So what's the important thing to do here? Probably steal a creature. This one is not the one to steal, but Tome Shredder seems really good. Obviously, they're going to tap it in res... Well, they might not tap it in response. It means I can't block with it next turn. Hmm. I can also potentially draw into the tendrils here. What's the thing to take? It's probably Tome Shredder, right? It's e The only targets are this and this, because they can sack this in response, which would kill it. And I can't take this in the first place. Skurd has reach. I'm going to take Tome Shredder here. Tome Shredder triggers some other stuff. Uh, now the ball is rolling. We'll put a counter on this so it can block this inkling. I will get island and then we'll draw a card oh they okay they didn't activate it that makes sense i mean yeah makes perfect sense <laughs> um no attacks i don't think all right your move yeah i'm i'm strongly suspecting they have something that returns a spell from their graveyard to their hand professor of symbology also very good they have two of the better learn cards at lower rarities let's see what they learn this time reduce to memory exile a creature and give its controller a three two i am fine with them casting that on anything if they attack with the inkling i'm gonna block with the scurred colony if they attack with the fume and effigy i've got blocks there as well Tome Shredder is going to eat this reject. Okay. I think I just want to refuel my hand this turn. I could go Wormhole Serpent. Um, I mean, I kind of want to attack with Tome Shredder, but it gets bigger. I don't care if they cast this on anything. I get my value off of my cards here. Probably do it on, like, Scurried Colony, and then that 3-2 just trades with one of their things. I do think I want to go for the Blue Sun Zenith this turn and just have all my options open next turn. This is a Blue Sun for four, so it basically I'll untap with seven cards. If I go Wormhole, I'm just leaving mana on the table here. So why don't we just go ahead and pass? This is a Sorcery. This is a good card to have as a lesson, but it's not a good card, if that makes sense. Um, they're going to get rid of Archlord Emeritus. Fine by me. Let's go ahead and get an extra card off of it while we can. Target myself. Uh, put a counter on... Let's just diversify our threats here, I think. I uh, will get Island. This Wormhole Serpent is probably going to be really good. Uh, that can resolve and make my 3-2. And then Tome Shredder can eat another spell here. I feel like I'm pretty far ahead. Uh, yeah, let's shred some tomes. Get rid of one of the curates. I don't think I have anything that casts spells from my graveyard. I wonder if there's something that matters from the opponent's side. So that's pretty good. Um... I can use it to just make them get rid of this now, and then work to a work work on attacking next turn. Um, I've got a lot of options here. It's just if I make a big attack, they're going to set up blocks to take out a couple of my attackers. So I don't really love that idea. Hmm. 
The most efficient play this turn is to go Wormhole Serpent Frost Trickster, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Like, if I attack with this, and they go block, block, and they sack this, I'm losing Scourge Colony, but that's okay, right? I could also go Frost Trickster this, and then they can't actually kill Scourge. So that seems pretty good, too. Let's do that. So tap down the 4-3 and attack with this Scourge Colony. Then I'll play Wormhole Serpent. So they can kill this if they want to block with the Glyph Lever and let it die. But otherwise, I'm just poking for 5 here. And now we'll go Wormhole Serpent and pass the turn. Glyph Weaver still being super annoying, but I'm so far ahead. Opponent's so far back on mana. I guess they could have a Sweeper. Not sure what Sweepers are in the set. I guess there's the red one. That can currently deal 3 damage to all of my creatures. Which seems like I come out on top. There's the white one that costs 2, two more mana. It's 6 mana unless they want me to bounce 2 of my creatures back to my hand. I think I would be fine if they cast that as well. Expel, exile, target, tapped creature. Well, can't do anything about that. All right, let's make Tome Shredder a little bit bigger. Serpentine curves for days. All right, so now I've got 10 mana, right? 6, 7, 8, 9. No, not quite 10. Um, just want to attack with anything that, like, I can still, I can attack with Tome Shredder plus Wormhole Serpent. I think it really matters what I do here. Attack with these two. They go block, block, sack, give indestructible. I'm just going to attack with this. Yeah, this is probably wrong. I should be using Wormhole Serpent here. Attack with this as well. And then activate, make that unblockable. I guess if that's all I was going to do, I should have attacked with another creature. I'm going to play Serpentine Curve this turn, though. Also, I messed up. Like I messed this whole turn up because <laughs> I could have gotten additional point of power. Yeah, this this was not a great turn. I don't think it's ultimately going to matter. I'll put the counter here so that they can't really do too much with that. I'll take Prismari Campus. And we are definitely in Wrath or Lose territory. And it did not seem like we had a Wrath. That being said, they only drew four lands, which is a little bit awkward. We missed a couple land drops too, though. All we needed, though, triple blue. Turns out our deck's busted. Um, blue Sun Zenith. Everything's kind of coming together with this deck. I'm pretty happy with it. It put us at 4-0 right now. We haven't taken a loss. You know, we've played against a couple of people who have been either mana screwed or flooded, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get. This will be match number 5 coming up next. See you there. All right, back for match number 5 against GYC on the draw. Hopefully not against an aggressive opponent here, but uh, we've got some ways to stabilize. Some decent cards here. We've got a cur Curate on turn two as well. Black, yes, I want to see more black decks. Thank you for drawing the tap land on turn one. Always appreciate it, especially blue mana. Very nice to have. Oh, no two drop is great, and that is a way better two drop to be playing on my end. Let's see if they, oh, they've got a kill spell. It's getting a lash of malice. Yeah, we're going to see that a lot. That's fine. They used their second turn for my second turn. We've got a Silver Quill Pledge Mage. This gets either a Flying or a Lifelink. Um, whenever you cast Magecraft, whichever one you choose. I'm going to go ahead and just tap it down, get my Trickster down, and then next turn I can go for the double spell potential. The Arcane Subtraction um, might be okay. Humiliate. All right, so they're going to put a counter on the Silver Quill. They're going to take away probably my Serpentine Curve. Maybe the Arcane Subtraction is the card they care about. So this is going to become a 4-2, and they're just thought-seizing me right now. It's a little humiliating. 
I guess serpentine curve, right? I mean, you don't take a cure eight, so it's either subtraction. You might take subtraction here, actually. Because they don't know what I can learn for. They don't know that my, like, Warren board is really bad. <laughs> the cure eights are good to have. It helps me find an answer to Silver Quill Pledge Mage. And this is just going to be good. Like, obviously, this Humiliate. What was that? Put a plus one counter on it and learn. All right, what are you going to go learn for? Oh, well, this is a threat. Certainly a threat. Spirit summoning. <laughs> Body of research. Nice. All right, so we should probably curate. Um, we can serpentine curve to make a 3-3. Three, three. Opponent is also missing a land here. Hmm. This can gain flying, though, and is very likely to do so. However, it's just going to gain lifelink unless I put a creature on board. I think I like playing forest and serpentine curve here. I'm not even sure what I'd be curating for. Curate's a little bit better when I can, like, cantrip into one of these and play it. So why don't we just go ahead and get a 3-3 on board, force our opponent to give their silver quill pledge mage flying. Oh, that was... Oh, man, it said... <sighs> I hate that it counted what the power would be. It said two on the card. That's annoying. All right, well, I should have counted myself. Like, this is 29. That's the number of cards. That said two, which is the number of spells. Each player loses two. You draw two cards. Okay, that thing gains lifelink. All right, they're out of their mana rut. They're way ahead on board. Tempted by the auric that I can't cast. Youch. That is going to be good, though. All right, so we're curating. Ooh, that is not what I wanted to see. We're going to curate again looking for a land, I believe. I guess I can hold up, reject. All right, put any number of them into the graveyard. Keep that on top and draw it. I guess I should have put that in the graveyard and just hoped to hit a land anyway. And normally when you're missing lands, you want to curate and find that land so you can play it on your turn, but I think keeping up reject here seems kind of important as well. I'm falling behind pretty quickly, so I'm going to need to draw island. I basically should curate for island regardless. Otherwise, I'm going to just die to Silver Quill Pledge Mage. If I can steal it next turn, though, I can probably turn this game around. Uh, sure. Alright, gains lifelink. I think I'm actually going to chump it this turn. I don't want to fall too far behind. They're at 24, but that's okay. Let's curate. Uh, I want to draw both of these, right? Yeah, I definitely want to draw both of these. It's actually going to be a really good turn if they don't interact. So put any of number of them into the graveyard. Submit zero. I want them in this order. It doesn't matter because I'm going to draw them both. Untap, draw, play island, go boom, boom. Boom, boom. So we're going to take this. Uh, and then we're going to mage duel this on this. Give this lifelink. Gain six life. Back up to 19. Attack for two. All right, that was a pretty good turn. <laughs> that was pretty good. Let's see what they've got to follow up with. Used a lot of resources to get there, but now we're the ones who are ahead on board. Hopefully they just blow a bunch of removal on these creatures now, and then I can like draw a forest and drop a 20 power creature. The serpentine curve really was annoying. All right, this card's pretty sweet. So it's a 2-2, two -two, or it's a 2-1. It does not have flying, despite the fact that it looks like it has flying. It gets you a planes when it enters the battlefield, and you can pay six mana to return it. Well, <laughs> we can cast Body of Knowledge. This one gains First Strike. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus one, plus zero, oh, but it already has First Strike. So if I attack here, I guess I just play this. They have to get rid of it. Like, they absolutely have to kill it, and I can just attack for seven this turn. All right, let's do it. Maybe I should take a screenshot. We should just take a screenshot. You know, 
for for the for the people. All right, back to the game. So we're doing this so that we can give the Pledge Mage flying and attack for seven this turn. 23 power fractal on board. If it bites a removal spell, then so be it. And if they don't have a removal spell, they're kind of on chump duty. They are not snapping off removal on my 23-23. Granted, this is kind of annoying. Because right now it's a it's an eternal blocker that always puts them up a planes. Alright, so they... Just to slow roll in for some reason. <laughs> um, can you attack, I guess, is the question. So that was destroy target creature, and if I block, I lose a life for each creature that blocks. Okay, opponent is going to race me. Needlethorn Drake is fine. Let's me hold up reject as well. They clearly have something for this, or they're not worried about lifelink. All right, I'll hit you back for seven. Let's play this, hold up, reject. We do not get to hold up the campus, unfortunately. They must have something else pretty good in hand that they had to think about casting this to kill my giant creature. Otherwise, it's a snap decision, right? Just kill the giant abyss. I guess they might be deciding whether or not they can afford to just block it forever and keep getting this card back. So I don't think they were slow rolling, obviously. <laughs> that was a joke, but... They're thinking once again. This is a hard card to block. Uh oh, they're looking at the graveyard. Don't look at the graveyard. Notably, their graveyard is all instants and sorceries. <laughs> it is all instants and sorceries. Is ours all instants and sorceries? Nah, we've got a creature in there. Oh, we've got two creatures? That's embarrassing. We used both our curates. We could cast a blue sun zenith, which I think would put me on board to start winning this game they're technically dead on board if they don't deal with a threat silver quill command uh target player draws a card and loses a life target player sacks a creature i'll just block the de or sack the death toucher i think can't block this anyway what were the other modes here return target creature with mana value two or less uh do i just do this they're gonna hit me for five and then next turn they have six on board um, I think I'll reject that. Just one less blocker. Doesn't matter what I give here. They can't attack me with both creatures now. They have to leave a blocker back, and they have to chump block. All right, Blue Sun Zenith is game, though. Doesn't even matter, because I'm going to give this thing flying. All right. Turns out control magic's good when your opponent dumps a bunch of resources onto one creature think things just lined up really nicely there. If I don't have a control magic, then that gets a lot worse for us. Had to draw the third island as well. Hey, we got the cast body of knowledge. So right now, my body of knowledge is 23. 23, 23 is the highest I have seen off of that card. Do better. Show me better. I don't think you can, right? Anyway, match number five is down. Five and oh, still haven't lost a match. Let's see if we can do the seven oh sweep. This will be match number six coming up next. See you there. All right, welcome back. We've got a pretty good curve here. Two drop, three drop for sure. Possibly four drop into this to draw cards. Especially if they have to use early game interaction to deal with these. They might not have an answer for Emeritus. This card has been pretty good. Um, granted, I haven't played against too many extremely aggressive decks, so it's kind of hard to say. Hello, my friend. Hello, Jan Tor, are you? All right, this gives creatures plus one plus one vigilance and trample and then if it's a token it's cheaper to equip it it's a pretty good card uh notably i don't have second island yet this card seems like it's pretty good in the format hunt for specimens make a pest learn all right they're just they know exactly what they want to do um i'm not trading this for a pest we'll play a biomathematician inkland summoning plus troop uh team pendant's pretty good Makes it a 3-2 Flying Vigilance Trample. Okay. Fine by me. Um, yeah, it would have been really nice for that to be another forest. As it stands, I don't think I cast anything this turn. Yeah, this is really bad. This is really bad. Take, take that number off of this Serpentine Curve. 
because this is saying it would make a 1-1, one, one, which is correct. But that symbol is showing, hey, that it, that is so misleading. Okay, um, hate it, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and jam with these. I don't care which ones trade for what. Opponent probably doesn't block at all would be my guess. And unfortunately, I'm not doing anything this turn, but... Ah, okay. Fine by me. It, yeah, it's a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> it's a 4-mana 1-1. One, one. If they equip, I'll block. It does clear the way for them to play something else. I'm still going to take some damage as well. Oh, they're going to kill my Needle Tooth? Ah, uh, sure. This is, I mean, this is good for them for sure. It's not unbeatable. <sighs> yeah. All right, well, we get the Carrick Wrangler down. Attack for two here. And just ship the turn. This is where having more islands would be nice. Probably supposed to cut an island for a forest in this deck now that I think about it. Flunk. I don't even know what that does, but it killed my creature. All right, the race is on, and they are winning the race. That is not a card I wanted to cast, or rather draw. All right, well, oh, I guess I have the campus up. No, that I didn't miss up this turn. All right, what do you got? Spiteful Squad. So that's a 2-2 two -two Death Touch. When it dies, you put the counters on a different creature. Seems fine. Forest has to go bottom here. I just need Island really bad. Scurred Colony. Can technically block right now. Just a 2-2 two -two is probably one of the worst things I could have drawn. So what I really need to have in this game, and I needed that to be Island last turn, I think, is to trade off with this, let them put the counters on the Inkling, and then steal it with Tempted by the Auric. As it stands, that didn't really pan out. Um, definitely block and Spiteful Squad if they attack. Also, as it stands, I'm just super far behind. That does something, but doesn't do much is the problem. Uh, my Learn card also costs blue. So yeah, I mean, we've had some mana screw on the opposite side, but this is definitely uh, catching up to us here. Sparring Regimen is insane. I'm just too far behind this game now. And it feels like I have the exact tools to win this sort of game too, which is kind of obnoxious. They're going to put a counter on Spiteful Squad. I'm going to minus this. Go get my learn card that doesn't do anything. Take three. If I could steal this, that would be just... I mean, that that would put us in this game. Yeah. One island. Not going to cut it. Uh, I'm actually going to swap out a forest for an island there. But showing the why I ended up going from four to two serpentine curves. Actually, don't... It, it Just based on that game alone, I can tell that's not a card I'm going to play very often. The upside is that you get an overstatted vanilla creature. The downside is games like that where you can't cast your four drop spell. Uh, I don't think I should go down to seven forest though, actually. Yeah, let's keep nine and eight. Uh, we took our first loss there, five and one. Let's see if we can recuperate and draw some more blue mana. Hey, we got lucky drawing blue mana in other games. It's bound to circle back around and have plenty of games where we don't draw blue. So let's run it back for match number seven. See you there. Like I said, it's bound to come back and bite you. We have to mulligan this. This is a lot better, even though can't cast my spells. Um, what do we put on the bottom? Probably blue sun zenith as awkward as that is maybe put one of these green spells on the bottom like mage duel am i on the play i'm just gonna lose this game <laughs> this is this is like a loss i think i can put blue sun it just costs a ton of mana it doesn't interact on the board and hopefully if this survives i can use that as my card draw it does look like i'm on the draw actually oh no my opponent also mulligan is that what's happening i i didn't catch whether i'm on the play or the draw here I guess they were lit up. Being on the draw would be a lot better. Gives me a better shot at hitting A, lands, and B, specifically, forest. Seems as though opponent has tough decision, though. Is there any way to check? All right, they also mulliganed. Sure. And it seemed like a pretty tough decision for them as well. If I just rattle off land, 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 I'll be happy. Five drop is not what I want to see. 
Arrogant Poet attacks as a 2-1. All right, good job. Cool game, fun time. So they can pay two life when this attacks to give it flying. Right now it just gets the free roll, which is extremely annoying because they just get ahead when normally you would have to be at parity to make that card good. As it stands, I'll just concede if I don't draw a land next turn. I won't snap concede, but I'll feel like I've already conceded. If I draw a land, I can Frost Trickster some stuff away. Uh, okay, I'm off of it. I know I can get back in this game, but I would rather not. Um, rather not, you know. I'm not the type to waste people's time for a 2% chance of winning or a 10% chance of winning on a limited game where there aren't really any stakes. So we'll go ahead and move right along. Take up two losses very, very quickly due to mana problems, and we'll see if we can turn that back around. So match number five, six, seven, match number eight coming up. See you there. All right, we are back against the Sushi Snacker. We've got an okay hand. It doesn't actually do anything until turn three, and that turn three play is uh, probably fine, but not the best. We do have the good old 33-33 for six. Not a card that you want in your opening hand. Um, lead off Forest here. Just try to make sure we're smart about how we're setting up for this body of research. So we'll see if they go creature. I'll obviously play trickster. Them not going creature is a little awkward, but I'm still going to play the trickster here. I guess they could reject it, but having this on board sets us up to be able to mage duel something else. Um, I think I'm just supposed to play wind drake here. They reject it. They reject it. That's fine. Curate. No. Uh, something they could have cast there could be a card like this. Prismari Prudge Mage. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it can attack as though it didn't have defender. All right. Well, I'm going to attack them. And I'm probably just going to play this. Um, alternatively... I could cast this and this. I could also just cast this and kill their 3-3, but I would rather get this on board and start accumulating value with that. Worst case scenario is I play this, they kill it with a spell, and then attack me back for 3, but if that's not exactly what's happening, we're probably okay. Green mana. Teamer again. I wonder what you would call Teamer in Strixhaven terms. All right. Well, worst case scenario happened. Oh, it's even worse than we thought because they're going to just get a free card. Fair enough. Went for the high value play. I don't think it was right to go this into this anyway. They got Fractal Summon in, which is not one of the ones we're incredibly worried about. All right. So Island would let us put a giant creature on board. As it stands, I'm just going to Mage Duel this thing. Um... If they interact with a pump spell or something, I do have this. The The lesson's actually not bad, right? Can I look at my sideboard here? I don't think I can. Let's just mage duel. Plus one, plus two. Kill that. Attack for three. Keep up arcane subtraction, which doesn't really matter. I'm going to make a three, three. Five mana, three, three, perhaps. Island one time. Oh, the Quandrix Apprentice. Yes, of course. Very, very good in my deck. I assume just as good in their deck, and they're holding up mana for something. We drew Island. Do we play this? This can't be ca hit by Reject. It can't be hit by the Bounce spell. It's not getting burned out. This is where... I'm going to pause the video for a second and look up what can happen to this off of just Blue Mana real quick. I'll be right back. Um, so, return. they can't bounce it with that. They could counter. They're probably not playing this. Um, so the equation. They can't reject it. They could re-sculpt, which would be okay. All right, looks like we're fine. Burying books isn't going to happen here. All right, let's go ahead and cast it. And I'll go ahead and attack for two. That might prompt them to do something first. Is this an instant? It's a sorcery. You've got to watch out for burying books. All right, let's make a 28-28. And see if there's something I'm forgetting here. 
I guess there could also be like a mystical archive card or something. Like if they had whirlwind denial, counterspell, memory lapse. All right, what do we have now? So the five mana, put a creature on top, would obviously deal with it. I don't think there are any green or blue spells that are dealing with it. Uh-oh, don't target my thing. Ah. All right, well, they had an answer. I guess I should have looked at things. I was going to cast that regardless. This gets a permanent back from your graveyard. It's really good. All right, that's not bad. So make a... Oh, it's not a 3-3, three, three, though, is it? It's 1-2. God, this is so egregious that it says the number. No, well, no, it is a three three, right? One two plus one. Am I am I just being stupid? Yeah, I think I might have been being stupid. If this says one on it, it always makes a one one. Never mind. I'm just dumb. Sorry guys, I'm just dumb. We're going to attack, play Serpentine Curve, and hold up whichever one of these we need to cast. Opponent is at 11. This Fractal Summoning is going to be decent. This card's really good. Should have looked at the gold cards too, but didn't have all the time in the world to do that. This is like one of the worst things they could have had for sure. Uh, if they go for the, f looks like they might be going for a fight. Prismari, Pledge Mage, sure. Needlethorn, we'll counter that one because it's just annoying to have to deal with. Does that mean it's resolving? Okay, they, <laughs> this is not, right, they can pay for it. Good job. All right, it was all part of the ploy. It was all part of the ploy. I can attack, so I can attack, get my learn card, and cast it while they have more cards in hand. That seems like the best thing to do. Uh, I'm going to jam with this. Might not even block. Okay, that's good for me. Shrink that. Pick this up. And then this is, if an opponent has more, draw. I'm going to draw two cards. Draw three instead if they have at least four more cards in hand to you, which is not the case. So let's just get a draw two while this card actually does something. Island Curate is pretty good. Again, though, this Fractal Summoning is going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, they have Frost Tricksters. It's pretty good. So they're just going to bash for five, it looks like. That's fine. It's understandable. Fractal Summoning for three. Attack for five. All right, this Quandrix Pudge Mage is way better than I gave it credit for. Take my five. Untap. Play Wrangler Campus Curate. And now if they have interactive spells, I'm just going to probably just lose, I would assume. They have a lot of mana. They're splashing red for one of the big spells. Maybe not. I just got to block and hope they don't have too much. It's probably best case scenario for us. So we go like this, this, and then we curate, put a counter on the trickster. Okay, let's, uh, let's let that resolve and see what lesson they get. Uh, sorcery, put two plus one counters on a creature. Okay, so that's actually not that bad. We're going to curate and put a counter on our frost trickster. We're going to get another curate, so put any number of them in the graveyard. Keep the curate on top. It's actually not that bad. I go down to seven, but I do get to eat a creature and those two just bounce. This is a little annoying. But they want to cast that next turn. Ooh, multiple choice. Multiple choice draws a card, but it might actually not be great for them because I'm going to bounce my trickster unless they target themselves. Oh, X was four. Yeah. Return a creature you control to its owner's hand. I'll just return trickster, I suppose. 
It's not great, but I can replay it, tap down a creature, and be just fine. Biomathematician's good. So Mathematician plus Trickster. Hmm. If I go Trickster, tap this. Yeah, I think I've got enough blockers. So Trickster, tap the 4-4. Four, four. Just attack with both of these. Whatever they block, they kind of can't block. I don't think they have anything for two mana here. Okay, I will curate and I will put a counter here. Just eat their 3-3. Blue Suns, Devouring Tendrils. I probably just want to take Tendrils. So what's my plan? They're going to put two counters on something, give it Vigilance. They're only going to have these two left. They're going to have, you know, three more cards. Um, so this is going to be 5-5 five, five Vigilance. I'm going to block with the Fractal, obviously. Oh, I should have played this first. Makes the Fractal bigger. Can I afford to take Blue Suns as the thing? I think I just want Devour and Tendrils. Cast it this turn. Kill the Fractal or kill the Apprentice. Might be right to take Blue Suns, though. This is a tough call. They're both really good. One, two, three, four. Are they, like, close to decking out? Not really. I think Tendrils kill a creature while I can is probably a good bet. Maybe not. They're going to untap with that 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to go for the greedy line here. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back. Oh, I forgot this is Curate. I'm, oh, I want to draw both of these. How do I go back? I can't. Ah, oh, jeez. No. Oh, I'm going to bin this blue sun zenith. God, the interface for this. That's so just not okay. All right. They don't know about this card in hand, but yikes. All right. I got to get used to curate here. That's my definitely my fault. Let's see if they cast this on something. It's really not that good. Eureka moment is good. So draw two, put a land into play. Is it tapped? It is not. All right. Refueling for sure. And I binned a blue sun zenith. I could have had both. I could have had both. Just, just me not really paying attention. All right, you still got seven mana. You've cast a four mana spell this turn. You still have seven mana. Opponent is at eight though. Okay fine by me so this is vigilance um i don't want to die to some dumb combat trick i'm gonna block with my fractal token all right didn't look like there was an instant there into a giant serpentine curve i accept wormhole serpent that's good so we're gonna Can't get anything quite above 8-8 eight, eight here. I can kill this, though, and put a counter on Trickster. And then set myself up to win next turn, because I can double activate Wormhole Serpent. These three cards scare me a little bit, but it is what it is. Blue Sun Zenith would be good. I mean, if they just have, like, Wormhole Serpent of their own, then so be it. Um. So, yeah. This punches this. This gets a counter. I gain two life. That's actually very notable. Play a Wormhole Serpent, and then they've got to deal with the 5-5. Five five. Actually, they just have to deal with Wormhole Serpent. If they kill the 5-5, five five, I can make two other creatures unblockable. We'll see what they do here. Again, the red mana, though. I, they could be splashing for just this, but I assume it's one of those big Izzity spells. One has 12 mana, so, you know, the world is your oyster at this point. Show me what you can do with 12 mana. Eight, 
88 is getting chump blocked by Biomathematician all day, every day. Definitely feels like no combat tricks either. All right, that's not gonna stop them from dying. Campus guide, sure. All right, so, hmm, they can, I guess I go attack with this, this, this. So I'm, I'm worried about the thing that puts an attacking creature on top cheaply. I guess they could just cast that, but I think I go attack with this, 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 and then um, once attacks are declared, I make these two unblockable. So I have, they have to deal with two things. And if they have two things, then I probably lose. I definitely lose. Uh, so four mana, make this unblockable. Four mana, make this unblockable. And F6, as they say. Show me what you got. Nice, 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 nice. Sorry, sushi snacker. That was a very close game. See, that's why I concede the games where people are stuck on two lands. And by people, I mean me. Uh, we didn't go the straight 0-3 after <laughs> winning five, so we get one more match here. Win or loss, it's over. But I'm happy with the deck. It's playing out pretty nicely. I'm seeing some cool things. I'm kind of I'm kind of digging the gameplay here. So let's go ahead and jam one more match and see what happens. Uh, see you in match number nine. Welcome back. Welcome back. Blue mana looks like it's going to screw us with this hand a little bit, but. Trickster and the Mage Duel can deal with some early aggression. Gives us some time. We're on the draw. Oh, we have a Hall Monitor. Okay, we're going to take some damage. We've got an aggro deck here, my friends. Let's see how badly they curve out on us. This can make creatures unable to block later in the game. Okay, 2-1 that comes back as a 3-2 later on. I got nothing going on here. Trickster's going to tap some things down. Be fine. Did draw a second island. I'm going down to 15 on turn 3. Maybe even less than that. I've got the tools to stabilize. Just need it to actually happen. Mm-hmm. I could fire this off to take two less damage, but this is so much better if I can blank something with it. All right, opponent has the curve, that's for sure. All right, let's go island here, trickster down the 3-3, three, three, and pass the turn. I really need this trickster to survive. When one or more cards leaves your graveyard, scry one. Nope. Dang, this, people are just getting me with this. I have no other creatures is the real problem here. So I'm going to go down to 12. Unless I draw an island, I'm just going to get got by this. Uh, so this is not looking good. Inkland summoning that they can't currently cast. Nope, they can cast it next turn. All right. Another trickster is good. Need it to survive, though. All right, 3-3, three, three, stay locked down. Okay, this means no combat tricks, otherwise you attack with hull monitor here. I'm not going to take that block either. Down to 10, stabilized a little bit. Got some answers for some things. And you have something up for one. Oh, you have a land as well. Okay, Wormhole Serpent blocks. But what's better? Mage Duel? Hurricane thing? Unfortunately, didn't draw the island. So if I go Wormhole Serpent, they make this Wormhole Serpent unable to block. Yeah, that's not working. Oh, the problem, though. So I think I might have to actually have to Mage Duel this stupid thing. 
and then use this to trade off here and go down to five. We just don't win that game, do we? If I mage duel and kill this, they make this unable to block. Attack for four. At that point, I can just cast this to take less damage. Hmm. I guess if I go Wormhole Serpent, they use mana to make Wormhole Serpent unable to block. And then this trades for this. I go to five, and then I untap and Mage Duel, killing this. Seems worse. Let's kill this stupid thing. Ah, God, this is so tough. He uses mana to have to make this unable to block, though, is the thing. All right, I need to make a play right now. All right, let's play the blocker and make him use their mana to have it unable to block. Might have gotten run over here. One, two, three, with the one drop chipping in for three damage and having a relevant late game ability. It's hard for us to deal with when we're on the draw and we had one creature to play. Having a two, two would have been pretty good here this game. This also would have been good, but triple blue, you know, that that's a real cost. Triple blue is a real cost and it's hurt us in a couple games. It was very good when we cast it, but you got to be able to cast it. Obviously, if we draw island next turn, that sets us up pretty nicely to go like Tempted plus Mage Duel. Expanded Anatomy. Okay. And now they make Wormhole Serpent unable to block. Is that the is that the gig? Oh, they just have an answer for Wormhole Serpent? Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to trade with the two one. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, please draw island. Need to draw island. Reject. That is not an island. However, I can go mage duel. Kill this. And then use the arcane subtraction to not die next turn. And then island still kind of helps. If I have to, if I'm priced in the cast and reject, then I'm just dead. Teen pennant, sure. I'll take an additional point of damage here. Or I'll take one, I guess. Ah, oh, that gives vigilance. That's so good for me. Please put it on the stonebound mentor. That's so good for me if I draw island for this tempted by the auric. Shrink it. Get this card that doesn't matter. All right, top deck. Island, take your inkling. Island, take your inkling. They have something they can cast. I guess they can move the team pendant. Grin and Ignis as well. Island, 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 island. Oh, body research. <laughs> and this does nothing. That's why this card sucks. All right, we got got by triple blue. Uh, maybe we should have one additional island in the deck if we're going to be playing cards like this, but yeah, uh, we're dead. This does nothing. And we're going to take our third loss. So we took three losses, and it might be deck build and error that cost us some of those games. Yeah, that was a good game. Um, we should probably be playing ten islands with three triple blue cards. Uh, that being said, we lost one match to just draw in two lands, period. Can't do too much about that on a mold of six. And then that last game, probably a little bit different if we're on the play than the draw. Obviously, if we just draw triple blue, we probably just win that game. But, you know, if you're going to play this many triple blue cards in your deck, um, you're going you're gonna to take some losses. So let's get some packs, let's talk about the deck, and then let's wrap this up and call it a night. Uh, missed out on a 7-0, unfortunately, but that's what you do when you get greedy. Thankfully, the greed came in the second half, like the punishment came in the second half of the matches, not the first half. So we got to play the full nine games. We'll act like we care about some of these things. I mean, we do care about the Mystical Archive stuff. Some pretty cool stuff there. 
Like this one, Memory Lapse. Okay, well, I don't really care about that card, but. Chuck, got us a Chuck. Galazeth Prismari, very good card. Kind of goes without saying, though, all of the Elder Dragons are very good cards. Warhol Command, another good one. And this is the last one, yeah. Uh, Velomachus Vel Vel Warhold, also very, very good. A little bit confused as a Warhold card, but is what it is. We've got an Academic Probation. Not a good card. All right, so real quick. Oh, we didn't actually save the deck, so we can't talk about it because Arena won't let you look at your previous decks, but um, the deck as a whole felt cohesive and good. Um, obviously, we lost to some blue stuff, like some, some mana shenanigans, I would say, actually probably lost us all three of the games we lost in different fashions. And that's fine. You know, we ran that risk. We probably didn't put the right number of island in our deck, and that's okay. Um, I was constantly scared of our opponent casting big is it spell, so that's something to look out for. We played against... Yeah, we played against um, everything except for uh, Golgari, except for um, Witherbloom. And they all seemed like they did something pretty different and pretty unique, so... The gameplay was actually fun when people weren't getting mana screwed on either side of the table, and we got to do some pretty cool things, so pretty happy with it. The Wormhole Serpent felt good. The uh, Quandrix Mages felt good. The Rare we started off with, the Archmage Emeritus, that also felt pretty good. And uh, aside from that last game, nothing our opponents were doing felt like egregiously aggressive enough that I'm going to feel like this is a super aggressive format. So maybe it is. Maybe we have just too small of a sample size with literally one draft. But that's my experience so far. You saw my experience with Strixhaven. And uh, tell you what, we'll check back in at the end of the format and we'll see how we feel about everything. That's going to do it for this video, though. If you're still here, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sort of content. Just regular pack limited. Um, it's fun for me to get my hands on all the new cards and see how they work. And it's fun to just kind of get people's opinions about it, too. So we're about to sign off. Remember, if you are interested in our cube-related content, to subscribe to this channel for more content along those lines and more um, just unrestricted and peasant cube updates as uh, we get more sets. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all next time.